welcome to uh, this session on uh, cross-sectoral funding for the creative industries. Uh, I'm Thierry Bojar from uh, Media Deals based in, in Berlin and uh, very happy to, uh, to have my three uh, co-hosts uh, in uh, this panel today. So uh, Adjan Rapanigi from uh, Media Pro based in Belgium and Barcelona, I would say. Uh, Timo Argilander from Finland and Sinki and Guillaume Lotour from Level Up uh, in London, based in London. And uh, so thank you very much for, for being here today to, the, to this session. I also wanted to thank, uh, of course, uh, Art Tech for inviting us to do this, uh, this session uh, for, uh, for our topic that we, we hope will be, uh, will be interesting for you. So uh, thanks very much, of course, to Nathalie Prichard for, for that and Vincent um, Favra as well uh, to help us on, on that. So uh, the idea of this, uh, of this panel is really to talk about uh, funding, uh, financing for the creative sector, but trying to have an approach cross-sectorial inside the creative, uh, the creative industry. As you may know, creative sector is, is with different types of, uh, of uh, activities between you know, film, audiovisual, uh, games, um, publishing, um, you know, different fashion, etc. There are many, many fields and part of the creative sectors, but it sounds like, and it seems to me that uh, the, the sector, the funding of this sector is still very much on each of the, of the, these different subsectors. So if you want, if you do a game, you access uh, funding from a game company or a game specialist company. Uh, film, it's uh, from a film. And, and it looks like, it's, uh, it's difficult to have a cross-sectorial approach to, to this funding, even though, in fact, today, all this asset, this IP asset that we create are moving uh, from platform to platform. It's very, uh, it's not rare anymore to have a, a TV series that also have a game and a game that also doing a film after, etc. after at the same time, etc. cetera. So it's, it seems to me that there are many, uh, let's say, uh, cross-sectorial uh, fertilization between the, the different subsectors, but the funding is still uh, uh, very, very separate. The distribution is also very separate. I mean, if you distribute a game, it's on a game uh, platform, uh, it's a, a film on TV or on cinema, well, at the moment, no, but in general. And, uh, but the funding is still very, very separate. And that's, that's what I would like to, uh, to, to discuss today with my, uh, my three uh, Coast. Um, to start with, I would like to just introduce to you uh, to an EU project called Creative Shift that me and in fact uh, Alexandra from uh, Media Pro is also part of it, uh, because that's really what we are focusing on uh, in, this, uh, in this project. So if I can make it work, yes. So Creative Shift is a, is a project that we, we started about six months ago now. It's an EU project with different partners. I mean, the main partners are Media Pro, Media Deal, so myself, uh, Spielfabrik, which is a, a game uh, acceleration program, and Image, which is a music innovation acceleration program in Milan as well. Uh, and of course, with uh, the, uh, the Frankfurt Book, uh, Book Fair in, uh, in Frankfurt, that is the, the coordinator of this, uh, of this project. And we have two uh, also associations who is helping us in this project. First, the European Music Council, and second, uh, the Federation of uh, European Publishers based in Brussels. So as you see, these people are, are from different sectors, audiovisual, game, music, uh, publishing. And uh, the idea is really to, to look into uh, building a cross-sectorial European innovation ecosystem. So this project, which is 18 months long, is really about exchanging uh, experiences, and understanding how it works in the different sectors to, to learn from each other. And more than that is really to, to create a laboratory of innovation and to, to develop uh, during the, the project uh, different yeah, innovation, different ideas, different projects, different startups uh, that we could really look into that and we'll, uh, we'll go into this uh, cross-sectorial uh, sectorial idea. So what we, we've seen is that all these different uh, sectors uh, suffer from all the same, uh, same problem. Uh, fragmentation, lack of funding, problem of uh, having the, the right skills, technical and entrepreneurial, 
the market uptake as well, which is difficult, the, the political impact, and uh, yes, the lack of understanding between the institution and the companies when it comes to innovation support. All these different sectors are, are a bit suffering from that. And, and that's really what we, we, we would like to, to look at uh, during this project to see how we can change that. And how we're going to do that, uh, basically by creating uh, challenges. So we have now 10 challenges that we have uh, identified uh, during the pro at the project. And we have creating a, a community of players from the creative sectors and trying to work on each of these uh, challenge uh, to actually uh, make some recommendation to the, to, the, to the European Commission. And to do that, just to, to finish, uh, the idea is to have a three um, level of, uh, of work. First, by creating uh, the creative innovation platform, so to have different people uh, presenting different projects. Uh, through a platform that MediaPro is doing, uh, to have a community of creative innovation pioneers. So as I say, that's what we have. And we had a, a lot of people uh, already um, uh, coming and registering to this, uh, to this community. And we start our first discussion about the challenges at the end of November. And as I say, the idea at the end is really to, 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 to bring a policy recommendation and best practice uh, for a survey and report to the European Commission. So that's, that's what we are doing. And of course, if you are interested to, to join the community or to know more about the, the project, you can go to the, to the website, which is creativeshift.com, but EU, sorry. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, and, uh, and then uh, I propose to, to, to start really about uh, our panel. So to start with, maybe, I just ask each of you to, to present yourself, maybe just in, in a couple of minutes, so that you know we know exactly what, what you are doing, or at least what you what you, you do, uh, so that we can start having this discussion. Alejandra, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Well, um, you know, I work uh, absolutely in the audiovisual industry. I work for MediaPro, it's a big company producing uh, feature films and TV series and content for television. And in the last couple of years, we have also developed a, quite a bunch interesting uh, projects more related to virtual reality uh, artificial intelligence within all our audiovisual universe because uh, our our skills are from the let's say traditional business models and we definitely need to fit in this new cross media cross sector cross whatever model so it is challenge <laughs> Yes, cross whatever. That's what we are going to discuss today, basically. Thank you. Timo? Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I am Timo Aragillander from IPRVC, I'm the managing partner of the company. And uh, we are managing investment funds that invest in media content. So we have track in investing uh, in film, television, animation, uh, music, uh, video games, events. Uh, our current fund from which we are investing uh, is uh, doing mostly film and television, but uh, we have a uh, certain um, perspective also to financing something called cross media. Thank you very much. Guillaume? Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. So I'm Guillaume Latour. I run a fund called Level Up, specialized in uh, game studios and uh, gaming tech. Uh, previously, I was uh, working as a VC for 15 years, a more generalist VC, but also transforming my uh, focus on, on media companies, um, having founded a lot of uh, media distributions so in, in music, in video, in TV, as well with companies like uh, Deezer, Dailymotion, Molotov, and so on. And uh, right now, what we do, uh, having been really specialized for 10 years in games, we uh, also uh, extend our investments because the mobile gaming industry has been fully complete and a pioneer, I would say, in new models. Uh, we use that experience to extend our investments to uh, more, mean, more uh, creative industries than gaming, including uh, music, uh, uh, cinema, TV as well. Okay, thanks a lot. I've, it looks to me that I've got the right uh, three people to talk about that because that's exactly the the subjects we're, we're talking about. So two things that I, would know, I wanted to, um, to talk about, especially after what you discussed. 
First is about what Alejandra said about the new business models, because obviously uh, for this idea of cross media, is there a new business model attached to that? Or in fact, do we, are we uh, going to continue to follow the, the traditional business model that we have? And the second thing is of course, uh, to understand um, how private investor, because of course, what is important is that the three of you are private investments, um, can work with uh, together with public uh, financing that is until now very much uh, focusing on each of these sectors. As I say, public funding is really about for film or for game or so. And, and me, my idea is really to understand is if for you as private investors, you are more flexible about that. And how do you want to deal with this <laughs> idea of public money being very uh, on, based on the CEO? So, First, maybe about business model, what do you think? I mean, Alexandra, you said, okay, we need to change about that. What is your idea? And what the other think about that? Are there any of the new business model based on this cross media or not? Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, until now, at least, the, the issue is that the whole ecosystem, at least of the audiovisual industry, the one I know better, is still uh, fragmented because the way we produce and the way we sell is completely the way we did it before. So the platforms we have today are audiovisual platforms, whether they are good or they are bad for the business or whatever, it's a, it's a different discussion, but still you had broadcasters before to produce uh, films or television, and now you have uh, Netflix or Amazon, but still they are audiovisual. So we don't have, windows. At least I don't know of windows that would be able to monetize cross uh, cross sector uh, content in a way that would be profitable. So I think there is an issue there about how to access the content. There is also uh, something uh, that we have to, 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 to understand that access uh, contents on, on some platforms are very different to others. I mean, the, the public that accesses uh, video games have nothing to do with the public who accesses uh, a film of Penelope Cruz. So we, I really think we have to find out those kind of contents that are cross-sector for a community or for a particular age. It's not um, all the content that would be able to be cross-sector in all the areas. It would be, for me, a kind of community work more style. Okay. But this is just yeah. you know, kind so of imagination. Can I, just, can I just ask you to unmute your microphone when you don't speak because there was some noise? Sure. Uh, that would be helpful. Uh, so Timo, maybe what do you think about this idea of yeah. having this kind of community-based distribution yeah. more than per uh, type of uh, content? Uh, I might make a notion that even though that we are in creative industries, uh, when it comes to business models, we might be very conservative. Uh, yes. And as Alejandra mentioned that uh, in television, there are certain business models in film, there are certain ones in gaming, there are their own ones. And uh, I would say that um, in, let's say it's each sub segment of media there is kind of pressure to come out with new, new, new business models. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in television, the, which where, where the business has been based on, on broadcasters or streamers buying, buying a commission rights, uh, we can see the trend that we can be selling something on transactional basis, for example, on advertising video on demand, which requires totally different mindset that what we have had before. But what is interesting is that uh, this change of uh, business models and on each sub-segment of media, so e each sub-segment is meeting same kinds of changes. And uh, if I use this advertising funded model as an example, that is just the same thing that what the gaming companies are doing. So their advertising based uh, revenue is, is a growth, growth area. So uh, we might be looking at the changes within individual segments of media, and then some changes which kind of put together different types of media. Guillaume, of course, with game, it's very community-led. So I guess it's, it's a lot about what Alexandra talked about. What do you think about that? So, so I think it, it all has to do with the uh, user experience and the, the sessions. Uh, 
mobile gaming uh, has been uh, able to create a hundred billion industry in 10 years with independent players, uh, not really, this was not created by the incumbent uh, PC and console game uh, publishers and designers. And the reason why is that uh, there is an understanding of mobile that you need uh, because it's a small screen, a different, a different interface sessions, uh, gaming sessions are shorter, uh, more numerous per day. The way to monetize on mobile is very different than the way to monetize on PC. The way to distribute on mobile is different. And so if you talk about a different user interface, you talk about a different um, behavior of consumption and you talk about a different behavior of monetization as well, which means there is a different business model. So you could not apply, for instance, a PC game business model to a mobile game. It doesn't work mm -hmm. and vice versa as well. So when you talk about cross media, I totally agree with Timo. I think um, every media platform more or less has to tune to a specific uh, business model because the way people consume on those platforms is different from one another. But for example, when you look at what Apple is doing now with Apple One, I think it's called, to, 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 to bring uh, everything inside the Apple family. So between the uh, Apple music, the Apple uh, films, but also now the gaming part, isn't it a way, a, a start to, to, to put these people on the same platform? I mean, like for example, Apple One, I think you buy one subscription and you get everything, or even Amazon, you can get everything. Is, is In the case of Apple, I mean, what we saw is that uh, when they tried to apply the subscription model to games, for instance, it didn't work. Yeah. Apple Arcade has been a, has been a miss. So. Um, people don't consume games with subscription uh, contracts right now. They, they don't do that. And uh, it's been tried for, by startup companies and other larger companies for 20 years, the subscription model about, about games, and it doesn't work. It worked for cable TV. <laughs> it worked for some contents, but again, it depends on the user interface. But it, so it, works sure in, it works Apple in music. One. It works for music. Everybody's yeah. a subscription now. I mean, a lot of yes, It did, but at the cost of... Um, uh, you know, uh, many artists are complaining are complaining about sure. the fact that their revenues or uh, their income is much lower now than it used to be. So yeah. it, it was successful. It was profitable for label companies. It was profitable for users because now they have access to millions and millions yes. of tunes and so on. But there's still an issue of discovery and there's still an issue yes. with uh, their income for low, I mean, the artists who are not blockbusters. So, so yeah, what, what we're seeing is that what we're seeing is that kind of the, the revenue models become diversified and there are many streams that you need to need to receive in order to make your business work and there is no kind of no one one model fits all revenue model in place okay so i think, so I think sorry yes. just no, sorry no, 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 no. i think there is an old uh, uh, business that will sound to you all this is the case of disney business has always worked with a very particular universe kids and they built the whole uh, business models around kids and around their own IP. This means they have the IP for the films, for the videos, for the games, for the for Disney uh, Disneyland Paris or for whatever. So if you have the IP for this thing, and then you have a, a public, a particular uh, universe, then you might work on this cross uh, content way. But still, is somehow. Uh, the capacity of those people who have IP and have a particular universe and a lot of money to do it, obviously, but still. So I think that the matter of the IP is a crucial issue when you talk about these uh, cross uh, sectors because some, uh, sometimes it is not easy to, to sell your, your IP, even if you want, to uh, other player who uses it differently and obviously needs to 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 get money for that so yes. there is also an uh, i don't say a problem but an issue to work out on that point yeah no i think that's very interesting this link uh, with uh, the distribution and the community you know uh, depending on who you are targeting to you're using different uh, you could use different types of community and then different types of business models so i think that's uh, that's a very important point can we go to the second part, which is really about the funding? So in case of, uh, for example, for you, Timo, how do you approach a project that come to you, uh, which is uh, film 
uh, maybe it's a mainly a film, I would say, but he's also thinking of doing, uh, you know, the, the TV series adapted to it, and then maybe a game about it. How do you look into that? Are you just looking at investing in the film only? Or are you looking at investing in the IP? How can it be developed cross platform? What is your, your interest uh, on that? Yeah. Uh, we are in a way agnostic where the revenue streams come from. So, and and uh, I believe in the ideology that uh, content will travel on different formats. Uh, having said that, uh, when looking at the cases that we have in, in our pipeline, um, we haven't really done kind of such real cross-media things where there would be kind of several different forms which are equally important. So generally what we see the project in practice are, are that it is a film which might be uh, using its IP also as a game, might be an animation series where there will be some licensing and merchandising income, but clearly some yes. form of media is currently the number one. Stronger. It is not that we would require that, but that's, that's uh, how the best cases look like for the time being. And in a way, I'm hoping that we will be seeing a change in the future. Yes, you think it could, that could change, maybe? Uh, that could change, and, and uh, as we are coming from venture capital legacy, what we are looking for is that, of course, we make an on average uh, good profit on, on the investment, but also for each case we are looking at, can this be the big blockbuster, which, which kind of brings very high returns both to us and the creators and uh, the opportunity to expand the IP or, or, or different forms of media that might be a source of, of upside. So, so in many cases, we are recognized that there is this possibility, but this kind of remains to be seen that how big the upsides are going to be at the end of the day. Yes, okay. Alejandra, so yes, MediaPro is doing a lot of uh, different projects. And also I know you have a, a part which is also on innovation, etc. So how do you look into that? Is it something that is, as Timo said, it's not, it's not there yet, but could really go into that direction? Or do you think that, yes, the, the funding will stay, uh, yeah, first it's a movie or first it's a, it's a game, and then we, we, we see that the, the IP can, can, be, uh, can travel to another type of, of platform. But what is your, your take on Media Pro on that? I think that basically uh, public funds are uh, for a specific thing, and it's very difficult to request from public uh, institutions to uh, give uh, uh, cross-sector money only if it is for small project or very experimental projects. But if you think about the, you know, a, a film can cost three, four, five millions, even more, depending on what is it about. Mm -hmm. So, and this is only to create a film to go to the markets and cans or perhaps look for an Oscar, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a very specific thing, you know? And even in our company, we, what we do is those uh, products that were successful for any reason, then we try to profit from those and then try to work on other, other uh, platforms to profit from this IP. But still the, the, the money is invested on, I would say slots or sectors. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it is wrong to be true because you have to create, you have to create at least one successful product and then develop the rest. I would be surprised if you really succeed to make one successful uh, cross -se cross uh, cross sector uh, product, yeah. unless it is something very small or very specific. We still didn't find this connection between, uh, you know, the. Yes. Yes, I mean, I agree with you. The thing is that, okay, this, this cross-platform idea, this cross-media idea has been there for, for quite a long time now. And, uh, and, and, and we see project and also, and maybe Guillaume, you can talk about that, is, is of course with a new generation, maybe younger generation. I mean, people think more like that than bef but maybe before, where people say, okay, I'm, I'm a film director, so I do a film. I think today, uh, people coming out of, uh, of film school or game school maybe think differently more open. I think maybe strongly coming from one game or animation. I see a lot of people animation because obviously everything is on computer and they can, they can make that much easier to have a platform. Um, what do you think, Guillaume, about that? I mean, especially from the gaming people wishing to develop as well um, the, the IP available 
not just available, that's the problem, not just available, but really with a project with a different types of, uh, yeah. of type of product. So, so we looked at actually at um, several cases of investment where um, the pitch was about to uh, transition one IP from one platform to another. Um, uh, Alejandra was totally right in saying this only works, of course, if you have already a very strong IP. So, so the first thing, of course, is not to think about funding any team that would develop an IP, thinking it would be a multi-platform development from the, from the start, right? You need to make sure that there's one IP that is already successful. So if you talk about, I don't know, I, I've crossed companies like Ankama, for instance, who was uh, developing, so a company from the north of France, was developing an MMORPG game that was very successful with millions of subscribers and so on and dedicated to the young audience. They deployed their game into animation. Uh, they have animation on TV, uh, several series that were sold for many years. They developed into comic books as well. Uh, so they tried as, you know, as you said, uh, obviously Disney is the uh, number one example as they, everybody's thinking about Rovio as well, who of course, uh, made a movie out of Angry Birds. Uh, but, but by the way, it was an interesting story. When they came to Hollywood to look for um, you know, producers uh, to help them uh, build a Rio, everybody was taking them um, with, you know, not seriously. And so they ended up self-producing their first movie. And when it became a $2 billion franchise, obviously everybody regretted this. But they were not really respected in Hollywood uh, with the first movie at, at first, you know. Uh, we looked at a company called Team Two as well. It's a French company yes. that has a large portfolio into animation and who wanted to deploy an internal team developing games. So we worked together for several months, checking whether we could build an internal studio, for instance. What we discovered is a bit like when people who are doing third-party development try to do their own games as well, you really have to transform the company from the inside if you want to be able to be cross-platform. And sometimes it means recruiting a new team, bringing new blood, but it's very difficult for one company with the same team to transition, for instance, from B2B to B2C, for instance. Mm. So multi-platform for me, it means having a strong IP from the, from the beginning, okay? and having the right team to transition to a, to, to a new platform. All the mobile gaming story is about the uh, PC and console game industry being absolutely unable to transition to mobile, failing every porting of any game onto mobile, and it required a new generation of developers to do it. Uh, and oh, yes. now after 10 years, maybe the transition is, is much better done, much better, but, but there's still a lot of differences between, uh, between those two communities, I would say. So, so we are back to about this distribution way. I mean, you distribute through a PC or it's, mobile. It's all, oh. it's all about timing as well. I mean, it takes, well. it takes uh, 18 months sometimes in most cases to make a movie. It takes three years to make a game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It takes when you when you distribute that movie, you would have like uh, uh, you know a series of platforms like cinema, TV, VOD, and so on that you would use. That is a very traditional distribution system. When you distribute a game, it would be distributed to two hundred countries in one second. So uh, and right. then promoted over months and months, sometimes years. Whereas the uh, lifetime of a movie on each platform would be much shorter. So those business models in terms of timing as well have time window that there is there are very different and usually do not cross really so it's it's quite difficult to to do cross platform financing because of this as well okay so now unfortunately the time is running and it's very short this session maybe one question um which is a difficult question i guess but it's really about vr about virtual reality is virtual reality maybe a way to, to, to go into that because now we're talking about immersive content. So it could be a film as immersive content, a game immersive content, etc. What do you think about VR? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? There was a big, uh, a big hype about it, it went down. It's, you know, there are some interesting projects down. 
isn't it via a way to, 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 to get into this new area also the type of people doing VR are really this kind of new generation uh, uh, creative that I was talking about before? What do you think about that? Do you see VR as a way to, to, to move into this cross-media uh, in a better way or not? Well, if you want, I can tell you our experience. Media Pro is developing a lot of things in VR, and they are absolutely uh, disconnected <laughs> from what we do for, for films, because uh, in the end, what you expect uh, when you watch a film is uh, an experience with uh, people, with actors, so it's a completely different thing. Well, we are developing a lot of things in VR, but not exactly for the film sector. In some cases, for museums, I mean, using audiovisuals, but out from this, uh, I would say, uh, content uh, uh, thing of film and television. There is not, at, at least in my experience until now, a real connection. And um, I don't think it will be because there are different things. You know, we are also working in immersive contents and they are fantastic, but then you use the tools, the audiovisual tools and the XR and VR and etc., to create an experience. We could use it, and we are experimenting very, very, very seriously and very nicely in live football games, for example. It works incredibly well, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work in, in cinema, in our experience at least. <laughs> but is cinema the future of, uh, of the audiovisual sector? I mean, you know. No, no, be, uh, perhaps uh, not. So, yeah, perhaps yeah. it will become, you know. Uh, and of course, today VR is limited with the glasses, but yeah. if at some point, we get some VR without glasses or yeah, the, the, the AR uh, story, it's maybe a way to, to, to get into that. So Timo, what do you, what do you think? Uh, while I very much like the idea of VR, so what, what we still need is that to see the, such kind of uh, scalable use cases where yes. kind of ordinary audiences would be kind of really wanting to do that and, and, and the commercial models, but these are yet to be seen. Yes, sure. We don't have that. Yeah, I agree. The, the issue with VR is that I guess it's such a different interface and your experience and your session is so different that uh, some people would come from the gaming space, for instance, and just uh, you know specialize their game, I would say, into a VR uh, platform. But it, it's not enough. It needs to be dedicated to VR. I sometimes see VR like the IMAX uh, yes. uh, business. It's yes. uh, very much around, um, it's an event-based session. You could do it with a family or once in a time and so on, but it's not like this compulsive repetition of sessions that you would have in games, for instance. So it's, it's very different in that matter. So I think it's a separate, it's a separate channel. It's a separate content sector in itself. And it's not like linked so much to, to game, to gaming in my, in my opinion. In my opinion. Okay. Just, just last word about it. Uh, I agree with you all because it is true that uh, virtual reality is incredibly helpful when you really want people to feel an experience. Yes. But it's not exactly uh, something that for me would help the sector switch uh, to any, any area. It would be, as you say, Guillaume, a kind of different uh, tool, different experience, different uh, system, different everything. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I guess we have to finish because we, we, we are already a little bit over, but I think it's okay. Um, I think it was interesting. I mean, if, I think we're not there into this uh, cross-media, uh, cross-sectoral funding. I think we, we, we still have to, 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 to see whether it's the right way or the right uh, path to go. What I, what I got out of uh, this session today, which is very strong, is really about more the distribution model and how you get to the consumer at the end, whether it's uh, through the VR Google or through uh, a PC for game or for mob on the mobile or in cinema, etc. So I think it's very much driven more than the, by the distribution, more than the, the, the funding, this idea of cross format and uh, cross media. And I think that's, uh, that's quite interesting. And I think uh, it's on behalf of our project, I think we need to, to really uh, look into that work more and uh, I mean, go deeper maybe in this part uh, of the project, how to relate the funding to the distribution model, uh, than just the funding alone itself. So I think we, we're going to stop there. Thank you very much for the people I see, uh, the, the people who are there. Thank you for... Yeah.
Actually, the before attending. Sorry. No, I think that was it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah, see you soon to all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thank, Bye. You Thank you all. Bye.